continuing the excerpts from How to Rear a Child, the phase of blissful existence. The first excerpt is the phase of blissful existence, that is friendliness, a compassionate relationship that will help the other to go deeper into oneself, to become more independent, to become more alone, just like two tall trees standing separate but still close to each other, or two pillars in a temple supporting the same roof standing so close but so separate and so independent and so alone. This phase begins from 35 to 42. This is known as the phase of blissful existence. Verily from 35 to 42 you enter a new phase and this opens up a totally new door and suddenly you enter a totally new realm beyond human imagination. Around a master this happens to a devotee, otherwise on its own it is very difficult. If during your intimate sexual relation, you have entered your meditative space. I emphasize, if during your intimate sexual relation, you have entered your meditative space, if up to 35 you have felt deep harmony and orgasmic feeling, and you have discovered meditation through it, then from 35 to 42, you will help each other to go deeper and deeper into that meditation without sex. Because sex at this point starts looking childish and juvenile. Remember at this phase, from 35 to 42, sex starts looking childish and juvenile. This is the point of transcendence beyond sex and all that is dualistic. This is the realm of bliss. That is why I call this the phase of blissful existence. This is the realm of bliss that you have once heard in wilderness. 42 is the right time when you should be able to know exactly who you are. You are ready to enter your eternal home, riding the wings of his meditative insights. You enter the unfathomable ocean of bliss. From 42 to 49, you get deeper and deeper into meditation, more and more into yourself. Out of this blissful existence, you help the partner in the same way. Both become friends. There is no more husband-wife relationship. Indeed, that time has passed. Sex is transcended. It is no more a physical and mental phenomena. It has given its richness to your life. And now there is something higher. Indeed, higher than love. Higher than love is bliss. The realm of Sat Chit Anand or truth, awareness and beauty. 
truth is realized. Now truth is the basis of all actions as awareness. And beauty surrounds you like ever-expanding, all-pervading oneness. That is friendliness. A compassionate relationship to help the other to go deeper into oneself, to become more independent, to become more alone, just like two tall trees separate from one another, or two pillars in a temple supporting the same roof, standing so close, but so separate and so independent and so alone. From 49 to 56, this aloneness becomes your focus of being. Everything in the world loses meaning. The only thing meaningful that remains is your aloneness and you sink more and more into your innerness. From 56 to 63, you become absolutely what you are going to become. From 56 to 63, you absolutely become what you are going to become. The potential blossoms, just blissfulness for no reason. From 63 to 70, you start getting ready to drop the body. From 63 to 70, you start getting ready to drop the body. Now you know you are not the body. You know you are not the mind either. If life has lived meditatively full of awareness, this is what happens what I am speaking of. This is what exactly happens like this. The body was known as separate from you somewhere when you were 35. That is the time when for the first time you realize that you are separate from body. This is the experience of this phase of life, 35 to 42. And mind is separate from you as well, was known somewhere when you were 49. At 35, somewhere around there, you realize that you are separate from body. And around 49, you realize that you are separate from mind as well. Now everything else drops except witnessing self. Just pure awareness. The flame of awareness remains. The flame of awareness remains with you. And this is the preparation for death. 70 is the natural life span for man. It is not important how long you live. It is important how aware you are. How aware your life is. And if things move in this natural course, then he dies with tremendous joy, with great ecstasy, feeling immensely blessed that his life has not been meaningless. And at least he has found his home. 
and because of this richness and fulfillment he is capable of blessing the whole existence just to be near such a person when he is dying is a great opportunity a great blessing a great benediction you will feel as if you will feel this as he leaves his body some invisible flowers falling upon you although you cannot see them you can feel them falling on you from all around it has been always a great moment of benediction in the life of disciples when master leaves the body it has been always a great moment of benediction in the lives of the disciples when the master leaves the body and it is possible because the master can know when he is going to leave the body he can collect all those who have been his fellow travelers moving in the same way i have earlier narrated you the story the anecdotes when nakshbandi sufi shakuntala devi was about to leave the body he called his fellow travelers now is the time to come because body is disintegrating now that he is leaving he would like to give you his last gift as the master opens his wings towards the bodiless realm to which he always belonged since enlightenment you will feel the breeze which is incomparable there is nothing in life to which it can be compared it is sheer joy so pure that even to have a little taste of it is enough to transform your whole life now that he is leaving he would like to give you his last gift he calls the people as the master opens his wings towards the bodiless realm to which he always belonged since enlightenment you will feel the breeze that is in compassion there is nothing in life to which it can be compared it is sheer joy so pure that even to have a little taste of it is enough to transform your whole life that is why when the master is leaving body it is indeed a moment of great benediction a moment of celebration that is why when the master is leaving body is indeed a moment of great benediction and if you are available to this very moment you can be enlightened in that precise moment this was the phase of blissful existence imbibe this silence deep within you now the next excerpt respect the child respect should always be felt within it should not be imposed touching the feet of those was always my problem i have solved my problem saying that i will certainly touch the feet of someone 
whom I feel respect for, whom I feel some deep love for, and no one else. Children should be treated with great respect. However, all the societies have done just the opposite. They have been teaching children to respect the parents, respect the elders, the grandparents. Parents feel offended and feel hurt when children oppose them. They feel hurt because of ego and all their religious understanding is confined to the place of worship alone. They feel hurt because of ego and all their religious understanding is confined to the place of worship alone. It has nothing to do with day-to-day -day life. When they go to the temple, monasteries or the ashrams, then they meditate. But when it comes to day-to-day -day life, they do not have time to meditate every day. So they choose a special day that today they will meditate or the next day they will meditate. Meditating every day is cumbersome. You have many things to do. So how can you meditate every day? No, that's not right. Such is the understanding of the people. In India, touching feet of elders is natural. In the past, all elders were role models. Then touching feet was right. I had problem when I have to touch the feet of those who do not command respect. Respect should be felt within. It should not be imposed. Touching the feet of those was always my problem. I have solved my problem saying that I will certainly touch the feet of somebody whom I feel respect for, whom I feel some deep love for. But why should I go on doing this exercise to everyone for whom I do not have any feeling of respect? This is how it should be. However, parents consider children their possessions. They feel offended when vice versa is the case. Words are dropped at the children when they oppose the parents. The moment you oppose the parents, words are dropped. And they feel offended when vice versa is the case. Wisdom, awakening, understanding is to be respected, not the age. By age, it does not mean that one has attained to wisdom, awakening or understanding. And the same logic continues as regards to dead. Children are forced to respect the people who are dead because they are even older. We go on respecting elders out of our guilt feeling for all that we did not do during their lifetime. It is respect has to be given during their lifetime. But you never respected these elders during the lifetime, so you feel guilt. So you respect them when they are dead. People who have been dead for thousands of years because nobody can beat them. You are making the living respect the dead. You are making the fresh, the newly sprouting leaves respect the dead leaves which have fallen on the ground and are just going to fall down. 
in right upbringing the children should be respected because the old people are soon going to disappear but the children have a long life to live they are fresh additions of consciousness like new leaves that will decorate nourish and nurture the tree instead of the leaves that have fallen during autumn out of the tree at the most they will become nourishment to the tree nothing more than that and respect is an has an alchemical effect if children are respected they will the very respect will prevent them from doing many things because it goes against their respectability it will make them do many things which they would not have ever cared to do but now they are so much respected they feel like being worthy of that respect but right now the whole thing is upside down the children need to be taken care of and loved they need your help but they do not need to be made dependent on you the real help lies in making them independent indeed the real help implies that your help is no longer needed children are strangers in the world you can keep an eye on them so that they cannot fall into a ditch but there is no need to enslave them just to save them from the ditch if there are the only two or if these are the only two alternatives then the ditch should be preferred at least by falling in the ditch they will learn something they will learn what ditches are and they will learn not to fall again into any other ditch but slavery or protection for their whole life will make them incapable of learning but slavery and protection for their whole life will make them incapable of learning for the rest of the life in the schools a basic education should be given to all children by basic education i mean an international language to create one world their mother tongue and three arts reading arithmetic and writing by basic education i mean one international language to create one world their mother tongue and the three r's reading arithmetic and writing watch people's and writing is so ugly for the simple reason that nobody pays any attention to their writing and writing is the signature of in their innerness writing shows their whole personality whether there is rhythm or not their writing should be a painting and art it should be the basic education and after their after the basic education the teachers psychoanalysts psychologists should be continuously learning about the children and their potentials tests can be developed which can give more evidence that the person can become a great musician or a painter or a poet or a scientist right now the whole world is in a chaos a painter is making the shoes 
the man who was meant to make shoes is painting and so on and so forth. Naturally, if you see the painting, it looks crazy and there is no wonder. Everybody is somewhere where he is not supposed to be. It is a mess. I have heard Albert Einstein saying that if he had another life, he would like to be a plumber. I am reminded of a great surgeon. He was the greatest surgeon in India and he was retiring at almost 75. Even at such advanced age, no young man was capable of doing such artful surgery, surgical work as he was capable of, very neat and clean. Even at the age of 75, his fingers were not trembling, trembling while performing brain surgery. In a small human skull, there are 7 million nerves. It is beyond human imagination how small they should be. And when somebody is operating on a brain to remove some nerves, it is beyond human imagination how small they could be. And when somebody is operating on the brain to remove some nerves, the danger is he may cut other nerves which are so close together. So the hand has not to shake at all. At the age of 75, he was still a perfect surgeon. And all the doctors and surgeons have given him a party because he was retiring. They were dancing, singing, but he was sitting in a corner sad with tears in his eyes. One of his old friends inquired the reason his response was unique. He said, indeed, there is a reason. In the first place, I wanted to be a dancer. I never wanted to become a surgeon. My parents forced me. Although I became the most famous surgeon, it was not my heart's desire to be a surgeon. I would have been far happier just with a guitar on the street as a beggar or a singer or a dancer. All this fame and awards meant nothing to me. Each award has only reminded me of one thing that he was losing his life. Verily, he was not where he was supposed to be. He was sad because his whole life was finished. With tears, he lamented why he could not rebel against his parents and just do whatever he wanted to do. The world is so miserable and 90% of its misery and anguish comes from the fact that everybody is doing somebody else's work. Naturally, he is not happy. Naturally, he is not happy. And as a result, he cannot put his whole soul into it. And unless you put your whole soul, you will not be blissful. So the parents should not decide where their children are going and in what direction. It should be decided by psychoanalysts, psychologists, teachers who have watched those children for four years during their basic education. The children should be given tests so everything is clear where they will feel a fulfillment. When you see a child doing a painting, it may not be the painting of a Leonardo, but he is so lost in his painting that you can see his rapt attention. This says something. You see children playing with their toys like a mechanic, finding 
using different things as tools. Now parents decide for a better job. Verily their reasons for deciding differ. They are not deciding for the child and his potential. They are deciding for financial reasons and respectability. If he becomes a great engineer or a surgeon, he will have a good life, a comfortable life. He will have a respectable life. Their intention is not bad, but the path to hell is paved with such good intentions. The question is not their good intentions. Instead, the question is how to discover what is hidden in the child and that needs a flowering. And that is possible now. We can find out what is hidden in a child and that is possible now. We can find out what is hidden in a child and let him move in that direction. Perhaps he may not have a very comfortable life, but he will have a very contented life. Contention is more important. Perhaps he may not have a very comfortable life, but he will have a very contented life. And what is comfort in comparison to contentment? Perhaps he may not become the world famous, but who cares? How many people know him also does not make any difference, but dancing or singing or painting, he will have a fulfillment of flowering. His life will be juicy and his aura will be full of bliss and ecstasy. This whole world can be a paradise. However, for this, we just have to put everybody in his own place. Right now, everybody else is in the wrong place. Nobody is happy or blissful or contented. And the whole responsibility is how we start bringing up children. For this morning, only up to here.